Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Juan Pablo Altaza. I will moderate this conversation between Lucy Fabregova, Irene Isola, and Stan Bach. And there are three writers and who have in common at least one thing, the fact that they have won the European Union Prize for Literature, but also um, they are really talented writers and they have very original voices. And I would like to say I'm very interested about um, the ideas because I'm from Argentina, I have Italian passport and I'm living here in Czech Republic. <laughs> so, and I'm speaking English now, so it's kind of mess. And I'm sure I will find many um, answers and also questions which is uh, important as well. So, I will introduce our authors. Um, first of all, I will present Irene uh, Sola. She's a writer, poet, and visual artist from Catalonia. She studied fine arts in Barcelona, and she got a master in England also. And uh, she has published uh, two novels, the first, The Dams, and this, uh, won the Documenta Prize in 2017. The second, when I, sing, when I Sing the Mountain Dances, which is actually a really beautiful title, uh, which has won the European Union Prize for Literature in 2020. So, nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. And first of all, I would like to ask you, uh, how was your first reaction when you realized you have won this, such a prestigious prize? Um, first of all, I, I saw that I was receiving a call from Belgium, because on my telephone it said Belgium. And the first thing I remember was thinking, um, wait, do I know anyone in Belgium? And uh, no, I don't have any friend in Belgium. So I was like thinking that for a second, and then finally I, I picked up the phone, and and that was Miriam from the um, U UBL, um, and she told me that that I had received the European Prize for Literature for um, my book. And my first reaction, I would say, it was surprise. Um, then excitement, I was very, very happy. And then it also felt like a huge honor because um, Miriam on the other side of the phone was very happy too. And she was telling me that this was the first time that a novel written in Catalan had won the prize. So that felt like a big, big honor. And then we stand back, our um, writer from Norway, it's a pleasure. Um, he has published four novels. His third novel, uh, it's called Modern Google, which has won the European Prize for Literature in 2012, if I'm not wrong. Um, so, uh, how was your first reaction or impression when you realized you have won this prize? Well, I had never heard about the prize, and it was completely unknown in Norway. So it didn't get much attention. I remember there was a short article in one newspaper saying, Bokke wins unknown prize. <laughs> Today it's a bit different. Today they're making a fuss about it. And they also started nominating four writers before deciding which one would get it. So today they are using the prize much better than back then. But aside from that, of course, I was really happy and surprised that uh, yeah. we said. You had a ceremony because uh, after was like COVID, uh, but you, you had a ceremony uh, in Brussels, yes. Yeah. yeah. How, how was that? Uh, very strange. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always fun to be part of things like that, but it's so far from my everyday life, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a strange thing to participate in. Thank you. And finally, we have our local star, Lutze Fauleva. Everybody knows her. Um, she's graduated from um, Palatsky University in Olomouc, and she has published two books, Dust Catchers, and her second novel is um, Death of Mind. And also, the same question how was like this moment when you realized you have won this prize? Um, would I speak in Czech? Because yes, I'm not sure I speak in English. 
Um, já jsem byla hodně překvapená, protože jsem i jsem nevěděla, už když jsem byla nominovaná, tak jsem byla překvapená, protože jsem nevěděla, že ten rok um, je, je i Česká republika součástí uh, ceny Evropské unie. A když jsem se dozvěděla, že jsem vyhrála, tak jsem měla samozřejmě velkou radost. A nemohla jsem to oslovit asi tak, jak bych to bývala oslovila, kdybych nebyla těhotná. A, no, ale nevím, to bych vlastně řekla víc, než že mi to udělalo radost. Uh, I would like to say some months ago we had interview um, the French writer Jean Marie Gustave Le Crecieux, uh, which has uh, won also the Nobel Prize. And he told me that the idea of Europe is very complex because there is not one European civilization but many European civilizations. And according to him, for instance, people from Spain could have more in common with people from Mexico or Peru or even Argentina than with people from Norway or Iceland. But, ironically, I found in the novel of Irene Sola an epigraph from a very famous writer from Iceland. <laughs> so that was a very, very surprise for me. And I, I would like to ask you, how could you sum up your own ideas of being an European writer? Uh, maybe you can start talking about your uh, literary preferences, for instance. I don't know, uh, maybe Amy? Uh, sure. So, yeah, as you said, um, in my second novel, there is, um, it starts actually with um, a little, well, like a little paragraph from Haldor Laxness, um, Independent People. Um, that is why, um, that's because I, I lived in Iceland for a little while. I finished my BA in Reykjavik, and there I discovered Haldor Laxness. I feel I felt a strong connection with him and with his book, Independent People. I think somehow um, that book um, spoke to me or made me realize about things that I was interested in, in terms of my own writing, um, like for example, um, folklore, uh, oral traditions, etc. And, and I thought it was very important for it to be in the book. Then, um, in terms of being uh, a European writer, um, like making big statements or, or, or answering big questions, it's always kind of um, difficult for me. Um, I can say that I, I write in Catalan and that, I, um, and that I've written my two novels from London, which is um, at the same time like kind of maybe strange. Um, and um, my influences are, are, are wide. I, I have read a lot of um, Catalan literature, a lot of um, Spanish literature. Then I studied in England, so I read lots of English and North American literature because I can um, speak and read Spanish. I read lots of Latin American literature. And I have this feeling that um, I haven't read enough um, European literature. I have read some European literature, but I feel this thirst of knowing more about what is being written at the moment and what other writers like myself are, are writing in all these languages that I cannot read, but that I want, um, I want to read translations of. And for me, this prize was somehow um, very interesting also in order to get to know all these names, all these other writers, all these other like um, literary traditions all around Europe that I have the feeling that um, I want to know more about. Yes, uh, as a writer for me, Europe is very important, uh, especially Central Europe and Eastern Europe. I think the best literature, the one that has inspired me the most, was written between, let's say, 1900 and 1945 uh, in, in these uh, regions. So I'm thinking about writers like Kafka, obviously, Rilke, Marte Lauritz Brigge, uh, Robert Walser, a big favorite of mine, uh, Andrei Platonov, the Russian writer, Bruno Schulz from Poland. More recent writers also like Imre Katesh and Olga Tokarczuk. And this is the kind of literature that I really 
feel affinity to myself. Not so much to Western European literature, of course there are brilliant stuff there as well, but for me personally, this is the, uh, this is the heart of literature, this region of Europe. Oh, I didn't know that, so you're in the right place now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lucien? Um, sorry, I'm a little bit lost. Yes, and so like, if you could like sum up your own ideas about being an European writer, and maybe you like can uh, start speaking about your references, uh, literary references, and uh, if you consider your literary references, for instance, are mainly from Europe or not, I mean, like, you like writers from outside Europe, for instance? Oh, of course, and I like uh, European authors, but uh, um, maybe I don't know what to say. And do you, you consider yourself uh, an European writer or not? Yes, I'm going to become a Can I ask you a question in Czech? Yes, maybe it's in Czech. Can I ask you a question? Yes, I'm a little bit worried that the same question comes when I realized how the discussion is called. I said that I don't know how to answer it, and I don't know how to answer it. Já jsem o tom vlastně nikdy takhle ne nepřemýšlela o sobě jako o evropský autorce, až vlastně ve chvíli, kdy samozřejmě po získání té ceny se stalo to, že jsem začala být překládaná do více jazyků a začalo pro mě být jako vzrušující pomyšlení na to, že mě budou moc číst i v jiných jazycích. A, ale to asi prostě nemám intelektuálně momentálně na nic jiného a lepší, co bych odpověděl. Okay, and I was thinking about like the topic of your books. Um, for instance, in the novel of Irene Sola, we have like this legendary atmosphere of Pyrenees Mountains, for instance, and in the book of Bach, uh, like we have the topic of um, traffic accident, which is we can think like uh, a universal topic, and also we have in the book of Lucie Faulerova uh, the obsession with death and suicide. So I would like to ask if you consider this topic like universal topic or European topics, and what about the perspective of your writing? Do you consider it European one or universal one? <laughs> Um, I, I, I would say that, um, that I think the topics of my um, novel to be universal and that I, that's actually something I like to play with um, because my novel is settled in the Pyrenees Mountains in, in, in northern Catalonia, very close to the frontier with France and, and that is a specific place in the world so I chose this place and I analyzed and I thought about that specific um, place. But at the same time, I did so um, with, um, with the intention of addressing and connecting with readers from all over the world who could um, um, understand those characters and who could feel close enough to those characters, even though if those mountains were far away from where they are from, or even though if they've never been to those places. So I think the topics in my, in my books are universal. Um, maybe we could even say that most topics are universal, but let's um, <laughs> let, let every topic <laughs> yeah, it speak for itself. And, um, and then there was another question after this one. Well, yeah, if my literature is European, right? Yes. If my topics are, are European. Um, I, I am sure that if I was not from where I am from, um, if I was not from a little town near Barcelona, uh, my writing would be different. Um, because I have this feeling that everything um, feeds you in terms of, 
of your writing so that you learn and you take things from everything that surrounds you. Um, so I'm sure that I would write different mm -hmm. if I was from somewhere else or if I was not from Europe or if I was from somewhere else in Europe. Um, but um, at the same time, I hope that if I was from somewhere else in Europe or in the world, I would still write, even if um, those were different books, because writing for me is one of the most um, fun things and one of the, the, yeah, the things that I like most. Yeah, when I wrote this book about traffic, I, I thought about Norway specifically to begin with, because Norway is a country with many mountains and fjords. And for a long time, the different parts of Norway were very isolated, and it was really hard to communicate between the different valleys or small places, because it took such a long time to get from one place to the other. And in recent years, there has been spent so much money on infrastructure, like tunnels, roads, very, very expensive projects. And, you know, the entire cultural budget of Norway corresponds to, like, 50 meters of road building or something, you know. So the, the sums involved in infrastructure are so huge. And at the same time, because Norway is an oil nation, so I was interested in reflecting about the impact of oil on human awareness and feeling of life. For example, uh, <coughs> there is so much energy in oil. There is so much, it's such a wealth. How do we spend this wealth? Basically, we make small metal boxes. We make million, billions of them. And we transport individuals in 100 km per hour, horizontally. Uh, and this is probably not a very wise way to, to use it. But it's so, the phenomenon of traffic is so massive that we don't really think about it, we just take it for granted. So as maybe uh, you understand, I, I try to think locally to begin with, but then it becomes uh, universal, I think. I hope, because everybody can relate to these things, uh, to traffic, the impact they have on the daily life. Also, uh, uh, traffic accidents, as you said, where I've always been fascinated by the fact that if you see the statistics, you can always tell in advance how many people will die in the traffic one year, take, take or plus minus a few. That's amazing. Yes, but if you read about it in the media, in the newspapers, when you read about traffic accidents, they always treat it like exceptions or tragedies, but it's not, it's just statistics. So the, we know that that will happen, so there is a kind of hypocrisy around the, the way they are being dealt with. They'd be surprised about the accident, it's like strange. Yeah, but it's inevitable, it's the price that we pay. You know, some people will die in traffic, but we don't sacrifice traffic because it's so important with this infrastructure, but we, we have to keep pretending that it could be avoided still. <laughs> Do you see um, this obsession with death or suicide? Do you think this perspective has to do with like European mentality or also to be like universal topic? What do you think? No, I think that the most important thing is that the most important thing is universal. Ale, ale samozřejmě to, že jsem to vyprávění zasadila do malé české vesnice a že je ten kontext si určitě nám tady umí se zabít třeba na sebevraždu jiný počet lidí než v severských zemích nebo na pak jižních zemích. Takže si myslím, že tím, že je to skrz pohled holky z české vesnice, tak tak tím je to univerzální sice téma víc dáno do nějakého konkrétního kulturního kontextu. Yes, but I think the it is true that it's like a very universal topic, but it's true that also the the novel is very Czech. Now that the perspective is very Czech, I think in your novel. Uh, a v čem ti přišel ten přístup český? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Because the this like trashy comic dimension of the book, like uh, of course you talk about the um, trashy metro also, 
but this like you have like a combination of humor that I think that is very Czech and also European like Czech. To, na, na to naštěstí máme spoustu chytrých kritiků, který, který tohle hodnotí. Já, já tohle vlastně nedokážu tím, že nic z něho neznám a odsud vlastně jako pocházím a je mi to možná nějak vlastní kombinovat ten humor s tou tragikou, tak um, nedokážu posoudit, uh, jak moc je to jí, jako jiný sdělovací kód pro jiný evropský země, nebo, nebo popravdě nemyslím si, že by to bylo zase až tak mimořádně český. Myslím si, že to Češi rádi říkají, že, že je to pro nás jako nějak mimořádný ten, ten jako švýkovský humor nebo tragikomika, ale já si tím vlastně popravdě nejsem úplně jistá. Especially for uh, Norwegian writers, and that is very interesting. I was wondering if, in some point of view, a writer needs to be translated in order to become a European writer. Uh, so, do, do, what do you think about uh, this idea? Of, if you have like explain why did you say that? I can't remember having said that. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but obviously, to be translated is a great honor, and. I think that's the real benefit of the European Prize, European Union Prize, is that it facilitates translation. Uh, what I discovered was that it facilitates translation to Eastern European countries, uh, not to Western European countries. So it's my book was translated to I think ten or so to ten or twelve countries, but exclusively in the eastern and central part of Europe. So uh, if there is a It seems to be an important price in half of Europe, and the rest of Europe doesn't really care about it. And you know, what what do you think about or do you consider like readers outside Europe can understand in the same way your books as European people, European readers, or not? Yes, I I think so. I absolutely think so. Um, I think any reader who wants to connect to book and absolutely connect to, to my book. And for me, translating was um, something something great, a big honor and something that made me, um, and it is making me because um, my book is still um, being translated. I just won the prize last year, so some of the translations haven't been um, done or out yet. And it's, um, for me, it's very exciting. It's very interesting also. Um, the process of, of the translation, like the conversation with the different translators. And it's um, fun for me to see um, the different questions that each translator asks, which might do or we might have something to do with the language or just with the person. But it's fun how each translator asks different questions. And yeah, also like the, um, like the questions or the comments that the readers have to do Um, are different depending on on, on which uh, language or which country is being translated. So that's very that's very exciting, and I I would agree in saying that it's probably the the best part of of this of this award. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Um, já si myslím, ptáš se, jestli uh, jestli je to srozumitelný i pro čtenáře mimo Evropu. Já to si myslím, že určitě jo, co by ne, jako zase, zase tak strašně jiný kulturní kód to není, ale, ale myslím si, že v tom je právě, jako kdy, když bych byla americká autorka, a tak si myslím, že, že, je ten, že je to tam víc jako stejný, že mě tam vlastně na jednom konci Ameriky pochopí úplně stejně jako na tom druhém konci. Tím, že evropský země, že Evropa je prostě různorodá, to je vlastně to, to krásné, co, co je. Že? A vždycky vlastně to, že je to trochu jinak v každé zemi a že, že se můžeme podívat pohledem trochu jiným jako kulturním na, na to samou, třeba na, na, na ten univerzální problém, který řešíme i my, tak to mi přijde, že je právě skvělý, ale zároveň ne, ne, ne nesrozumitelný. And I was thinking, I have a question for Lutie Fabedova. 
And when Czech Republic uh, entered in the European Union, it was in 2004, if I'm not wrong, and you were 15 years old. No? And so, if you can like share how do you remember this event, uh, this announcement, I don't know, this moment, uh, because I, I was told, uh, I don't know if, if it's true, but like, it was like a, a really change in the, in the schools, in the society, or I don't know. How, how do you remember this, this moment? Uh, if it was important for you or not at all? <laughs> Přiznám se, že tyjo, jsem v tomhle tom věku se zabývala úplně jiným věcem. Vůbec, vůbec, jako vím, že se to stalo samozřejmě a vím, že se to hodně, že to bylo veliký téma, ale já jsem řešila veďary a kluky. A... Okay, and now talking about the uh, pandemic, which also is a very important subject, and um, I would like to ask you how pandemic uh, affected your work, your writing, maybe, and also if you can like consider this topic about Europe talking about pandemic, if it's possible. I don't know. Understand? Well, it, it, for me, it didn't affect me at all, almost. I, I, I mean, I stay at home and I write anyway, so it it's no, wasn't a big difference. Uh, you want me to connect this to Europe? <laughs> well, well, I don't know, Europe disappeared for a time. I mean, I always used to travel quite a lot, and for some time it was just not possible, and I realized how much I missed it. So like now, coming here, being able to go, it's, it's a bit... <laughs> I mean, I've only been in Czech Republic once before, so I, I'm not, I can't say it's like coming home, but, but traveling is such a part of our identity, at least it is of mine. So just to be able to move around and meet people again is, is wonderful. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, for me, um, on the one side, it gave me the like the, the pandemic gave me the, the time and the space to kind of stop everything and just focus on 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 my readings and my writings. I um, I guess I'm lucky enough to live out of the city, so I lived in in a place in which I um, like I have a little garden, so it wasn't it wasn't very very bad in the, in terms of, of confinement. So um, I could work, not too much, because I remember being a little bit worried and like you had to make a big effort of like not looking at the news too often or you would get absolutely distracted. So on the one side, I continued with like, writing and, and reading, etc. On the other side, it did affect me um, because of traveling too. I, I, um, I, I had some big trips planned in terms of promotion of my book to um, to Argentina, for example, and to Bolivia and other places that I was really looking forward to go and then suddenly in one horrible week everything got cancelled. And so that was very sad. Um, but then it was not only that, but all the fact that for like a long while we could not travel at all. And I really missed it too. And um, two weeks ago I was in Greece and now I'm here and tomorrow I'm flying to Denmark for another festival and this is the first time that I'm kind of moving around and yeah, you cannot imagine how happy I am to, like, to be able to be here and to be able to be here. Uh, Mě to obohatilo hodně v mém osobním životě, obzvlášť protože jsem vlastně celou tu první vlnu půl roku strávila u Lízbuta v Americe, kde tehdy žil můj přítel. A vlastně pro mě to byla hrozně zajímavá zkušenost, protože jsem uvízla na úplně cizí půdě s člověkem, se kterým jsem se předtím už jednou rozešla, takže jsem vůbec nevěděla, jak ten, jestli, jestli tím vztahem se můžu být jistá. A, um, a vlastně jsem tam na něm byla svým způsobem závislá. A, takže to v mnoha ohledech bylo hrozně nepříjemný a v mnoha ohledech vlastně um, jsem... Um, 
nechce, aby to znělo nějak ezotericky, ale jako, mm-hmm. že, že, jsem, že, že přitom vlastně jsem hrozně moc věcí fakt poznala a otevřely se mi obzory um, nový. A vlastně jsem si to v něčem dost užívala. To nevadilo mi úplně, že, že jsem uvízla tam, kde jsem uvízla na jednu stranu. No a myslím si, že z toho vlastně čerpám tak nějak doteď a že se to nutně jakoby pojí i s nějakou tvůrčí oblastí, s tím, jak o věcech jako třeba trochu jinak přemýšlet, nebo s tím, že mě možná oslovují trochu jiná témata než předtím. Ale nedokážu to vlastně úplně jasně vymezit, co, co to ovlivnilo, protože si myslím, že to jde ruku v ruce nějak přirozeně s tím, že se věci prostě změnily, tak, tak mě to taky nějak ovlivnilo. Um, I don't know if we can open the questions to the public, if you like to, to ask something. No, I'd like to ask after all three of you have won, I'm sorry, I can't, sorry. After all three of you have won European prizes, if that's changed your inner voice when you're writing your future work now, meaning, do you start thinking, okay, I've got a bigger audience now, I've got a potential for many different translations because you know with Kundera being an example here as his philosophy and his works got spread more and more he his, his literature became much more expansive so I'm wondering do you think well I can tackle a, something that isn't as local you know especially with, with uh, Kasavam you know obviously you're a community within a community do you think okay now I've got a bigger pond that I can speak to? Um, I, I would say um, no, I don't, I, I've not been thinking um, this while writing in the sense that um, I try to be as free and as playful when I write as possible and I am being very um, honest with myself and with my interests and with I have this this feeling or this idea that when when you are writing, if you are having a very good time and if you are deeply interested in what you are writing, somehow that's going to reach the the reader and the reader, whoever he or she is and from wherever he or she is, will connect to that feeling. So I try that the the very good things that have happened to me in regards to to my novel, I try those things to not really affect my my future my future work i somehow try to protect my my future work even if it's good things which they are but i i still try to, to, to but do you feel like you want to explain more because you know that you might have more resonance that it needs more context and background for people who don't know um, your world because I think that um, that my like the themes that I work with are still very universal, and even though I do work with folklore, for example, a lot because I'm very interested in the way humans um, have used imagination to try to understand the world around them. So I, I focus a lot on that. But um, but folklore, even though it is extremely specific, it's also extremely universal. Um, so I I keep playing and I keep using the very like the very local and the very specific because somehow I think that is more universal than trying to be um, very universal. Thank you. Yeah I absolutely agree with what you say that right being local can be a very important universal factor. Uh, for me I think writing is extremely difficult and I sometimes think that to write is like to move in a swamp and the only places you can find your footing are the very, very few books that you're actually able to write. So for me, I'm just trying to find the next stone so I can move through this swamp before I know that one day, of course, it's going to swallow me and I'm not going to write anymore. <laughs> but uh, my recent, the most recent novel, I worked with it for 20 years and it was finally completed and so I'm just trying to complete each work and make it as good as I can and I don't really think much about an audience as such that, that belongs to the afterlife of the book. Yeah. No, um, yeah, 
vlastně souhlasím taky. Ne, nepřemýšlím. Já, já takhle o tom vůbec nepřemýšlím, protože cítím, že bych ztratila nějakou svobodu a autenticitu, kterou při tom sami mám. A v první řadě píšu stejně sama pro sebe, takže. Takže si vlastně nedokážu představit, že, že když bych se stresovala nebo když bych na sebe nechala dopadnout nějakou tíhu z odpovědnosti za to, že mě čtou ve více zemích a potřebuji být srozumitelnější, nevím, že jsem začala tohle to větu, pardon, zkrátka tohle tu odpovědnost na sebe odmítám brát, protože, um, um, protože No, už jsem to zkrátka odpověděla. Asi bych přišla o svobodu, kterou při psaní cítím a při nějaký autentický hlas a myslím si, že by to z toho bylo znát a možná by mě vlastně pak už lidi ani nechtěli číst. Gunstein said that somehow during the pandemic uh, Europe disappeared for you and traveling and also Irene mentioned that traveling makes you feel that uh, you are coming back to this space. Um, what else makes you related and do you feel and do you think it makes it related to the European or to other countries uh, you are living or, or related to? And 